Well, if I could sum up what the murals mean to Lacombe, I think it's life. It captures what our community came from, where we've been, where we're going. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about life here in Lacombe. I think it's part of the community's identity, really, like any other public art. But I think when you live in a community with public art, you kind of start, you begin to, it just becomes part of your daily life, right? Oh, they're a huge component of our, of our city now. They um, are a story about our history. You know, we start, Look Home started out as just a stopping house for the wagon trains back in the, the late 1800s. And so when, uh, the committee before me decided that they wanted to do murals. They went to the historic pictures. Because our downtown is a very historic Edwardian one, it just made sense to have the murals complement those buildings. And so for our community to be able to tell our history through the murals is, is very, very big. I always think it's going to look a lot bigger too. I always think this mural should look really big on this wall, but when you see it on the wall, it's, it's uh, it's a little smaller than you kind of wish, but uh, overall it's beautiful. It's beautiful color to it. We get complimented a lot because we are a small city, small, well, and town slash city, and uh, you know our public art program, our mural program, has only been in place since 2009 but we've accomplished a lot. The first murals were of the late 1800s and early 1900s in Lacombe. And now we're evolving more into, um, with the Clydesdales on parade at the research station, that was from 1930. And our latest um, mural, Hey Doreen, it was from 1949. So we're, and as we're progressing with them, they're becoming more vibrant, more colorful. Because when you're working off of historic photographs, usually they're black and white. So a lot of our original murals are, are uh, a little bit more in the sepia tones, not as bright and as vibrant. So we're, we're evolving. Um, as the time goes along, our murals are evolving with us. There were a series of murals that were uh, created in the early 90s to promote the town and as a kind of a tourism uh, promotion. This group of citizens went to council, asked for some money, and they got some money and they created, a, there's probably five or six that they did at that time. So we really want the town to design their mural. And because in this case, it's a train car, that, that was our only rule. We have to design a train car. It could be the craziest train car you can think of, like a float in a, in a parade. And so talking back and forth what that might look like, what they would like in there. We try to have community involvement in our art projects, our public art projects, as much as we can. And sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. And so with Lacombe, They've, they've had these really great ideas right from the get-go. They said, you know, we want a pig in there, we want um, our, our iron building in there. After a while, it was like, well, let's put a couple of trees in there because our Dutch our elm trees are, you know, another thing we'd like to, to show. And it was so cool because people would come and they'd paint and because Lewis and Paul were so encouraging, I mean, they blew my socks off. They really did because Lewis would hold up this tile and he'd quickly do something and people would go, oh. You could see them kind of decompress and go, okay, well, I can do this. It doesn't have to be fine art. It can be fun art. The workshops were, um, they were well organized. There was lots of people that came out. We had drop-in times for people that just wanted to show up with their families. We had schools registered, and so the, the, the schools and the teachers showed up with their kids. It, it, was, it was really well organized. That's usually the biggest hurdle, is having the community involvement. And then people would go home, or they'd say, can I get back tomorrow? <laughs> is there room for me to create another one tomorrow? Or they'd phone their friends and say, get your kids down here. We just had so much fun doing it. And that, to me, is that's a success right there when your community wraps its arms around a project like that. Um, in the E, when you see the word Lacombe in the E, there's, um, there's one that's called the blind, blind Man. 
and it's a local brewery company here. And I like the way that fit that fit into the E. And, and it, it on its own, and you could see clearly it's a glass of beer. From a distance, it you know really makes that E. It completes that E. So I, I like the way that turned out. What I want is I want the people in the community to paint something that's dear to them. If they're um, all about like let's say they're a crazy cat lady then they gotta paint a cat in there because everyone's gonna say, hey, of course, Margaret's gonna paint that cat. The committee went through the process of doing a, a call to artists and then you, you have all this wonderful potential artwork that you have to look at and decide which one do you pick. So I think that is a struggle and a fun challenge at the same time. That's one of the beauties of public art as well because it really engages the people and if you can get people involved, then you have success. You know, the, the Mural of Honours is, uh, is, was uh, the brainchild of, um, of Karen Kunar. She approached me saying, you know, do you know what your next mural needs to be? Is, the, is, is one for the, the, the Museum of Regiments. So I was specifically raising money for the Founders Gallery. Uh, I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could somehow wrap art into a kind of a brick wall campaign so that each person who donates had the opportunity to have their grandfather painted or uh, their favorite regiment or their favorite moment in history. And, um, and so uh, as I was kind of mulling this around, I thought of my friend Lewis. Um, and I knew that Lewis did these murals. At that point, we had to come up with the overall image of what this mural would look like. And um, Lewis had several sketches of, of what it could possibly be. And the overall image meaning the, the three heads that we ultimately ended up on. And the committee um, decided on the three heads because it best represented a tri-service museum that we were about to become. The first thing that I wanted to do was bring in the, the star power. So that led to um, the, the World War II artist. I thought it would really bring some authenticity, some relevance to this project because those, those guys were actually there. And they weren't all men. One of them was a woman. The, the first female war artist, Molly Lambeau back, uh, was still alive and was able to paint for us. So that was really neat too. In fact, one of the things that was um, extremely important to me while we were doing this project is that we had a balance of um, different campaigns over 200 years of Canadian military history. So we start in the mid 1700s with history and we go all the way through to Afghanistan, our most recent war. So I wanted to have a balance of campaigns. I wanted to have a balance of, of services. So I needed to be able to represent the Army, the Air Force, the Navy in equal representation in this project. I hope I was a vessel as opposed to a voice, like a voice that had something to say. I hope I, have, I was more like, like a vessel and allowed myself to be kind of a conduit so people could say what they wanted to say through my art. It, my vision for this project was to raise $200,000 for the museum. So in terms of exceeding my expectations, um, we ended up raising over $650,000 for the museum. So extremely pleased with how much money we were able to raise through the project. I think Lewis did a, a far better job in the execution than I could have even imagined. Nicola Goddard is in the murals, so um, first female combat death in Canada. 
you know, when I painted Nicole Gada, I just, I really wanted to, to her parents to, to be touched by that painting. And I thought of it every second, every brush stroke I put into it. I thought, you know, this is a family that's going to see um, their, their loved one that they're probably missing and, the, and that, you know, Canada um, was able to, you know, she offered her life for our country. And as an artist, I wanted to offer every brushstroke um, into that painting, you know, to honor her somehow and that. And I, I just remember how touching that whole uh, moment was when I got to meet them and, and uh, their feeling about the painting. And well, I really do love the mural mosaic because it was such a community builder and I have a title in it. <laughs> But it's fun, you know? I mean, when people say, why is there a pig in your mural, you know? Not knowing that that pig, the, the Lacombe pig, was developed right here in Lacombe at the research station. Mm -hmm. And that she was a really cool, friendly, kind of affable pig. And then uh, being able to have the trees, you know, because we are known for our trees and our trails as well. And our, in our community, we have wonderful people here in Lacombe. So when we can capture all that, in a mural and, and uh, have almost 500 pe people participate in creating it. That I think, you know, because it was so well-rounded that way, it wasn't just one person creating a piece for it, it was the community. That to me I think would make it a favorite of mine. So the Jubilation mural is a really bright and happy mural. It was painted by Alex Pavlenko, uh, who is, a, well, I wouldn't say local, but he's an artist out of Lethbridge. His work was inspired by the resiliency of the people of High River uh, after the flood. There was some really great public engagement that happened around that mural. They had a bunch of members from the community come and the artist took pictures of them. The people in the mural are actually people that live in High River. The story goes is, is the father had, he has Alzheimer's and so when they started playing, I think they were playing the um, taps or whatever, the moment he heard the, the, the notes of the, of the bugle or whatever, he just welt up with a bunch of emotions. And so you can only imagine what a, a person with Alzheimer's, where his, he kind of went back to think about and he just started to get really emotional. And this photographer saw this moment and just took that picture. And then I got a, I got a copy of that picture and talked with Karen about it. And the family, I think the family is the one that suggested this is the picture of our dad we want put in there. And they're the, they shared the story. So, um, so in looking at the picture, I thought, wow, you know, you, there's so much emotion in this photograph. And uh, really trying to encapsulate the the raw emotion of that photograph in the painting. Uh, Fort Spitzy, I think, is my favorite mural in, in town, yeah. It's a snapshot in time, really. When I look at the Fort Spitzy mural, I see struggle, I see starvation, I see shock. So in the mid and late 1800s, that's when whiskey came to, to this area and the effect it had on the First Nations was, was devastating. And this is also a winter scene, and the First Nations people frequently uh, struggle with starvation in the winter in Alberta. So the Redcoats are the Northwest Mounted Police, and they're there trying to put restrictions on whiskey. But my favorite image, actually, it's a nursing sister holding a fallen soldier. And to me, the image is so representative of Michelangelo's Pieta. It's, uh, it's very much like uh, a Madonna and child, or, um, except that it's a nursing sister and a fallen soldier. So the symbolism to me is so beautiful when you talk about sacrifice and, uh, and the Christian symbology. I think it's a very powerful image, and that, that's my favorite. 
back in the early 1900s, the research station had Pertrons and Clydesdales and Shires, all as part of a breeding program for the local farmers so that they could increase their herds and make them sturdier and stronger. But by about 1932, the research station found that the Clydesdales were their kind of their breed of choice. And so that picture is all of the Clydesdales that they were using in the field. So the, the drivers had them all lined up, you know, they're all harnessed up, and then they're going to be going, you know, getting attached to their plows or whatever, and they're going out into the field. It looks like they're on parade, literally. But uh, yeah, it was just such a cool shot. And John Ellenberg, the artist that painted it, loves doing li uh, livestock and, and horses. So he was just such a natural fit for it. I think educating children about the past is, uh, is really important. Uh, I think murals and public art are a great way to engage young people because it's not something you're looking at in a book. It's a tangible way to teach, I believe. Uh, murals and public art, you can actually engage with it. You see it, it's a big picture, I think, for a child, and that big picture makes an impression. The interest and the support for them is really growing. Um, especially with what we've had installed this year. We had three new murals installed here in the city of Lacombe, and people were absolutely raving about them. You know, they, uh, because, and I think because they are more vibrant now and they're uh, more gripping, even with Haydorin with the, the truck that's bumped out away from the wall, as, as the team were installing it, the men in the town are driving by and honking their horns and I love that red truck. <laughs> you know, so when your art can create an emotion and draw an emotion out of people, that's, I think that goes above and beyond what we were expecting, yeah. I think the murals are more successful than I would have expected them to be. I think part of that is because people come from out of town to High River and I think when once they get here, they see the murals and then they have, uh, then they're curious, so then they'll go to the museum, and at the museum, you'll find a mural walking tour brochure. So that brochure, I think, really gives people an opportunity to walk around the town, experience the town, and uh, see all the murals. You know, arts and culture create ripple effects for the community and, and when people come to see our murals, they'll also stop at a restaurant for a meal or they'll go shopping in the stores and even stay over at a hotel and those kind of economic benefits are huge. They're really, really important to our community and that's why it's so important that we continue to build with our murals and our public art collections so that we keep drawing new people in to see our community and uh, keep it growing. It'd just be great if everybody could tell their story in here, because like v verbally tell their story, because there's so much more than, you know, this one here, Lee Thompson, um, the, the, the fish hook, right? So they actually manufacture fish hooks here in Lacombe. So you'll see a few fish hooks. And, and for me, when I saw those fish hooks for the first time, I thought, oh, people like to do some fishing on here without knowing that there was going to be, you know, this fish hook manufacturing company here. But one of the things that started to occur to me as we were developing this mural is that I was listening to incredible stories. I was, we were representing history that was incredible history. I, I thought it would be really amazing if we had a way of being able to tell these stories. And so the interactive part of this, this project was not a part of the original vision. The interactive display came about after I started to be exposed to all these amazing stories and feeling that there must be a way that we can um, allow the, the general public to have access to some of these stories and histories that we were developing in a visual way. And so that's when we, uh, we started to work with the interactive display idea. One of, the, one of my intents always is like, I always, I always saw that the, each picture, like before I put it together, you could see each picture so clearly, and then once it's put together, it's like things get lost in the, in the big picture of things. So I, I always intended to, to have these murals be, um, be reproduced somehow, 
so that people can actually build them themselves and try to somehow put it together and that. So, so one aspect that I really like about the Museum of Regiments is Karen's done that. She's kind of made magnetic ones and she has kids kind of look at the tiles and she's kind of used it where, where it breaks apart and she can put it back together and, and you see the individual things. So, I mean, that's, to see it put together like that is, is, is much more exciting than to actually see the final thing put together. And the other thing uh, that it has become is an icon for the museum itself. So uh, it's almost like the Mona Lisa of the museum. And it's, it's something that um, is, the imagery has kind of in, pervaded every part of this, this museum. We use it on our business cards. We, we use it in our advertising. Our, um, it's the, the themes for our newsletters are each one of the, the little paintings to bring those to light. So it's become an icon for the museum. Uh, what it's become for me is a teaching tool. So uh, because of the interactive display, I can bring that up in classrooms on a smart board. And each year I travel to uh, you know, multiple classrooms uh, around the city and I teach children about why it's important to remember. And I teach them about 200 years of Canadian military history by taking them on a tour of the various paintings through the smart board. I can bring up a chronology of 200 years of Canadian history. And and with that, um, help them understand the series of actions and reactions and why these wars have taken place and why we should be proud of our Canadian Army. Ah, you know, it's like my baby. It's like, it's like it, it makes me feel, it actually makes me feel proud. It makes me feel proud that I was a part of something like this because, um, as an artist and, and doing a lot of murals, these type of murals that are made up of the community's involvement makes me feel, um, you know, that I, I didn't create this. This was created by the community. I just kind of facilitated it. I was like a conductor in an orchestra and, and the band played so great. And as a, as a conductor, I feel kind of proud of, of how it all came out. The beauty of the artwork, the, the awe-inspiring engineering of the artwork impacts people in, in a visual way um, that I think is important. And uh, once people start to take the time to drill down into the stories, they can do that at home. I, I think it enhances their understanding of Canadian military history. It enhances their understanding of why it's important to remember um, the sacrifices that, uh, that our soldiers have made over a hundred years in particular in Canadian history. Uh, so for sure, I think it has outreaching benefits that we never dreamed of for the general public. Why wouldn't we want to express our, our history and show our community in murals and in, in imagery? It's, you know, it's almost easy to do that because the wall space is there and a lot of communities, their back alleys are, are not the places you want to visit. They're not very pretty, they're not very nice, whereas our back alleys have become walking art galleries. Yeah, so why not? Like Lacombe's extremely unique. It's got some of the most fantastic murals. Um, the, the, the whole fact that the one street is, 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 is made like the 1920s, that is phenomenal. There's great like little industries here and that you would never find in a kind of a prairie province uh, town or city. And, and it's a city, but it never feels like a city. It feels like a small town. And um, and so Lacombe is extremely unique. It's an anomaly. I'm so proud to be a part of it. You know, to be able to expand the arts in Lacombe, to have a community that's really embracing all of it, to see that kind of growth in our community. You know, where, where all of those things are embraced and, uh, and people are working to see them succeed and grow is, I'm so proud of that.